Okay, let's do a thought experiment. Or maybe it's an experience experiment because I don't want you to think about it or think about what I'm going to ask or have you look into, but rather feel into it. Look in your immediate experience. So for instance, if I asked you, where is the picture that's on the wall? I don't want you to analyze, oh, okay, well, a wall is made out of this and the, the picture frame is made out of that. And to hang a picture, you need a hook and picture, you know, does he mean painting or does he mean photograph? That would be conceptual or thinking. What I mean is if I say the picture on the wall, I want you to observe the picture on the wall if there is one, right? So what do you see? What's the actual direct experience of the photo, the picture, the frame, the wall without all those words and labels? So everything I'm asking you to consider here is really in direct experience, immediate experience, simple, unfiltered. You don't have to think about it. So let's just say there could be two ways of perceiving experience. Let's call one structured experience and let's call one unstructured experience. Now, I would argue that 99 point probably five or 99.9% 9 of people largely experience the first category, which is structured experience. Let me define what that is. Structured experience is experience that you understand, that you can predict, that you have labels for, that feels like it's out there somewhere. It's not where you are, but it's somehow opposed to what you are, or it has a relational nature in reference to what you are. So an object across the room very much feels like it's across the room. It doesn't seem like you're applying a thought to make it over there. It's just over there. That assumption is structured experience. That objects exist discreetly as objects, apart from other objects and apart from you, that would be structured experience. Also, structured experience seems to follow a timeline. It seems like there was a moment today when you awoke, or maybe it wasn't today, but there was a recent moment where you woke up out of who knows what, dreams, perhaps deep sleep with no content whatsoever, and then you became conscious. And then things happened after that. Breakfast happened, talking to people happened, checking your social media happened. Then maybe you took a shower, got dressed. Who knows what the events leading up to this moment were, but it sure seems like they happened. They're on a timeline, you're on a timeline. Time is moving forward, or you're moving forward through time seems like that's what's happening. That would be structured experience. Structured experience is predictable. We feel like we know what it is. It's familiar, but it's familiar in a mental way. We can reference it in our minds with thoughts, with beliefs, with remembering. And from its own perspective, in its own paradigm, by its own set of principles and values, structured experience has a certain stability to it. It feels internally consistent. And there can be some sort of enjoyment derived from the predictability of it. Many people, probably most people, if they really feel into it, can see that there's a dark side to that predictability, to that relative stability. And that is that when we make ourselves feel in control, like we know what's going on, like we know how things are, where things are, who we are, and we get a little hit of some kind of enjoyment out of that, there's a boomerang effect. There's a, another side to this where we feel out of control or we fear we might be out of control. We fear not knowing how things are gonna go we fear not being able to predict reality. We deeply fear not even understanding what reality is. We deeply fear not knowing who we are. 
we deeply fear not having an image or paradigm of the way things are in general, even in this moment. Now, again, there's a broad spectrum of experience in regards to how aware you are of those fears. So I'm sure anyone watching this can relate to that first way of experiencing, which I'm calling structured experience. There's another way of experiencing, which I will call unstructured experience. And this is, in some sense, so different from structured experience, so different from the usual ways we solidify experience and self through mind that it's very easily overlooked. Now, occasionally you'll get a taste of it, somehow. Sometimes it's through using a psychedelic substance. Sometimes it's just random chance. But often it's through a certain kind of inquiry, a sort of spiritual practice, a questioning of what the nature of self is, what the nature of identity is, what the nature of thoughts, beliefs, etc. are. And by really looking closely and starting to see that we're surprised by what we find, we often get these little tastes of unstructured reality, unstructured experience, which means we have no paradigm for it. We have no box to put it in. We have no timeline to put it on. We have nothing to compare it to. The funny thing about this is that if you take a hundred people and you give them that experience of unstructured experience, that moment of breakthrough, there's a huge variation in how they respond to it. Some people find that it's the coolest thing they've ever experienced. That whatever that is, I don't know what that is, but I want more of it. Others find it uncomfortable especially the first time they experience it. Still others find it very scary, even terrifying, because it's so unexpected and we're so attached to the structured experience, the predictable experience, the experience where we know who we are, what we are, what that is out there, what life is, what reality is, what truth is, that when all that just drops for a moment, we feel like we're really scrambling for something to hold on to, but we realize there's nothing to hold on to. That can be scary. So when we first come in contact with this unstructured experience, it can vary quite a bit in our response to it. Also, even with those tastes, 99 plus percent of our experience will be structured experience. We'll run back to the mind. And what that sounds like with someone who's had say a spiritual experience, a mystical experience, even a taste of no self, non-duality, infinity, infinite heart opening. What usually happens is that becomes an experience, which is part of the structured experience model of the mind. Now it never actually changes in that way. It's still unstructured experience, but the structured self, the structured persona, that depends on this type of structure, or at least thinks it does, uses that as like a, almost like a badge, a badge of honor, or just something to collect into the collection of experiences to make up that fabric of known experience. Now, at some point, this changes significantly in that not only do we have a taste of unstructured experience, not only do we know that it's possible somehow out there somewhere, in here somewhere, we actually feel that what we take ourselves to be, what we've taken ourselves to be, actually shift, transform, or perhaps even sort of dissolve into unstructured reality. Now, if this is thorough, real, authentic, then I usually call it an awakening or can show. It doesn't need a word. There's no word or label for this. It also doesn't seem to happen in time because you need structured experience to have time. It seems to happen in all times and it's happening right now because all times and right now are the same thing because the timeline is a mental construct 
And now we have a new relationship with unstructured experience, and that's that there is no relationship. Everything is unstructured experience. And the overlay, the illusion the whole time, was the sense of there being structured experience. It was a mental overlay that was sort of hypnotizing us. It wasn't sort of, it really was hypnotizing us. That becomes very obvious at some point. That's the shift I talk about a lot. But again, it's not in the future. It doesn't happen to someone. It's finally recognizing, however that happens, that that is far more real than the mental model. It's permeating everything. It is everything. But it's also nothing at all. It's not any specific thing, any specific doctrine, any specific religion or spirituality. It's not a set of words, no matter how cleverly those words define it or describe it. They fall short, very short of the actual knowing of it. So this is when we start to, at least at times, live unstructured experience. We feel it. We see it. We hear it. It's here all the time. Now, we're not going to call it unstructured experience because I just made that up. But if you followed along from the beginning of the video, you have a feel of it and or you've dropped into it already. So what happens after that shift is that we become more familiar with unstructured experience. We become more attuned to it. And most importantly, we realize it's not other than our true nature. It's also not other than the true nature of the stars, the sky, sounds, footsteps, dogs, cats, rainbows, cars, anger, disappointment, frustration. It's all of that. And we start to live that. Now, it tends to fluctuate at first. You'll feel completely imprisoned back in the structured way of experiencing. And after this has happened, the structured way of experiencing does not feel comfortable anymore, generally speaking. It feels like a contraction. It feels like something's gone wrong. It's amazing to you that you used to live there and actually depend on its seeming stability, its relative stability. That's neither here nor there. So now you're letting go of structured experience. And at the same time as you're letting go of structured experience, reality, which is unstructured experience, is just coming into its own as you, as the illusion of you apart from everything. So now you can imagine it's very hard to talk about. Because who wakes up? Who deepens their clarity or deepens their insight here? Well, the question actually loses meaning. You don't actually have to figure that out at this point because you kind of already know intuitively that the question of identity doesn't really make sense in the way we think about it. So it's more about clarifying the nature of experience itself, the nature of unstructured experience. How does it feel? How does it feel to breathe right now? Can you feel the letting go inherent in breathing? Can you feel the non-locatability of it? How about the sound? Just listen. Can you appreciate the non-locatability of the sound right now? Can you appreciate the sound just on its own without any description of it? Without conditioning it? Without it being conditioned? Just that sound. This is how we climatize ourselves to unstructured experience. Not through a bunch of doctrine. Not by endlessly asking, who am I? Not by trying to become awareness, some formless space. Don't do it. That's structured. Formless is structured. Form is structured. Mind identification is structured. 
Enlightenment is structured. Don't structure your experience. Let the experience show you what it is, how it is. But don't make conclusions. This isn't any more about conclusions, understandings, taking notes. You don't need to take notes. Just let life live life. Let reality be reality, fully. Let it show you in every movement, every sound, every breath, every hiccup, every touch, every contraction. Just let it show you.